Hey what's up, this is Armband here. More and more I've been feeling like a pair of military boots would go very nicely in my wardrobe. I've got quite a lot of tech wear type stuff now and you will often find military boots paired up with gear like this. After all, a lot of it is effectively a more modern or a more futuristic twist on that older military gear. However, I was a little bit lost on exactly what to go for. I wanted to avoid your standard military surplus stuff. Not only does it have a reputation for not being particularly comfortable, but often it comes with a very utilitarian almost grungy kind of worn in look which isn't really my style I often go for the more athleisure more futuristic more kind of sporty clean looks so a relatively new Nike release, the Nike SFB Field 2 boot, this is the 8 inch or 20 centimeter version, I feel like helps alleviate some of these issues and would be a pretty perfect time to pick something like this up and integrate it into my wardrobe. Coming in at £159, which is just under $200, these are a fairly expensive offering both for a Nike pair of shoes and for a military boot. So on that basis, let's check out some of the comfort, the aesthetics, sizing, all that good stuff, and we can evaluate exactly how good these things are and whether they're something that you too should be picking up and integrating into your wardrobe. Is it worth investing in a more premium Nike boot or should you just stick to standard military gear, which let's face it, comes in at a far cheaper price? The most obvious thing aesthetically about the Field 2 boot is just how close this design is to a proper military boot design. This is very much not a sneaker boot that you would normally find from Nike, you know, an updated or beefed up Air Force One or something. This is straight up military boot design with a little bit of a Nike twist on it. And for that reason, a lot of the aesthetic touches here that you might normally find on Nike shoes aren't really present. No lateral swoosh, for example. Branding on the back is pretty minimal. And pretty much the only thing you'll find is a very small tonal swoosh and Nike logo to each side. The midsole and outsole too are far more aggressive than anything you would normally find on a winterized sneaker or a sneaker boot, anything like that. It, particularly if you look at the outsole, that tread is so thick, so even the harshest, the most difficult terrain is not going to be a problem for these boots. You've got a couple of other aesthetic touches that keep these in line with a military boot. You've got these ventilated mesh panels that run up the sides, and you've got that speed lacing configuration as well well, both of which are pretty commonly found on military boots. However, these elements have a sleeker overall look than your average military boot. You can see that on the paneling on the sides, there's just one or two extra lines in there that are clearly uh, created from an aesthetic perspective rather than pure functionality. The result is something that I think looks a little bit more futuristic, a little bit more sportswear driven than most military boots, while staying true to that tactical aesthetic overall. It just tips things in the favor of military sportswear, not quite to the level of a brand like Y3 with some of their boots where they really go all out futuristic space kind of thing, but just a tiny little bit to differentiate these from your military surplus product. What about comfort levels? Well, there is a foam midsole in this, but it's not any named sneaker technology. So I wouldn't expect the same level of comfort than your favorite pair of Nike sneakers. That said, they're not exactly uncomfortable, they're just noticeably more rigid than your average pair of shoes. The same could be said of the uppers. They do have a little bit of flexibility to them, but overall they're certainly more on the rigid side and there's no internal padding or anything like that either. So for general purpose wear, you might actually find that a pair of winterized sneakers, which often do come with some kind of, you know, furry bits on the inside or nice cushioning on the back of the heel, you might actually find those a little bit more comfortable. This does use a dual zone lacing system though to help keep your forefoot nice and locked into the shoe. That combined with the over-designed, incredibly chunky grip means that these are gonna feel very stable underfoot on all kinds of terrain. A shoe like this and named performance technology designed for comfort, those two things are kind of mutually exclusive. I feel the closest thing is something like an Adidas Terex Conrax Boa. Uh, that uses boost technology in the sole. Um, but obviously that is a very, very different look to something like this. What does work in their favor comfort-wise though is the significant mesh paneling that's on the side. That allows for a little bit of breathability, helps stop your feet getting too hot. I certainly haven't noticed myself overheating whilst wearing these, although you could easily use these in pretty cold conditions by rocking a nice thick pair of socks with these, because let's face it, no one's gonna be looking down these boots, so you can pretty much wear whatever you want. No need to flex your expensive socks or whatever, just wear something for ultimate performance and warmth. Wearing thick socks is an important point actually because in terms of sizing, I found that these fit pretty big. I originally got 11, which is my true size, and they were way too big. So these ones here are a 10.5, so half a size down. And even those are a little bit on the roomy side. So this plus thick socks is gonna be 
perfect fit, I think. So yeah, I would stay half a size down. It is a shame that Nike aren't really offering any sneaker tech in these shoes for the £160 price point. I think a lot of sneaker heads and shoe enthusiast buyers rather than people that would normally buy military boots are going to be a little bit disappointed because once you start getting to this price point, it's very unusual not to have things like Cushlon or Flyknit or Boost if we're talking Adidas. However, durability is clearly the main aim rather than sticking a massive air unit on the back and things like that are always going to be a point of failure. I have to say comparing these to a £60 pair of military boots that I picked up a couple of years ago, these are noticeably better quality in pretty much every respect. Even just standing the two up next to each other, the military surplus boots are kind of a little bit floppy, they don't have that much structure to them, whereas these, they keep their shape a lot better. And that in itself is indicative, I think, of these being a higher quality product than your average military surplus thing. That made me feel a lot better about my purchase and I don't feel that these are just a bog standard military surplus product with a Nike logo stamped on the side. Both aesthetically and durability quality wise, I do think that they're a step up compared to that. And to be fair, if you compare these to like, I don't know, a Flyknit racer that comes in at 130, there is significantly more material here. You are getting a lot of shoe. Because these are quite different to something I would normally buy and wear, I'd quite like to do a dedicated video on how you might go about styling these in different ways of integrating military boots into your outfits. But so far, I've been wearing these a lot with the Riot Division 4 pocket pants. I think the two make an excellent combo. Those Riot Division pants, they have a little bit of room to them. They're not too tight, so it doesn't make the boot look really, really massive. And they have a clear military direction and influence without just being like military surplus clothing. I think it's very easy to go down the route with a boot like this of just looking like you're in army uniform, which you kind of want to avoid, but I think the Right Division 4 pocket pants, they kind of skirt the line, like these Nike boots do, to be honest, of having that military influence without looking too tactical cosplay. So what's my conclusion on these then? Yes, they are expensive, there's no getting around that. However, if you are, like me, looking specifically for a pair of military boots, then I don't think you'll be disappointed with these, particularly if you're looking from a, a more fashion-forward perspective, because let's face it, I do think these look look cooler than most military products. Compared to sneakers, these have their clear weaknesses, which means that these are not going to be ideal for everyday wear. That's both from an aesthetic perspective and from a comfort and a performance perspective too. But in those particular outfits, I think they're going to do a really good job and are really going to help set things off. And also, if you do happen to find yourself in some pretty treacherous terrain or difficult conditions, these things are going to be far more appropriate than every normal pair of sneakers that are out there. And to be honest, these are really designed for and are going to come into their own in far more treacherous and more difficult conditions than I and, and most buyers, to be honest, are ever likely to wear these in. So does that make these a great value purchase? No, not really. But if you like the look of these, you are prepared to pay that higher amount for, you know, essentially the the cool Nike look compared to a standard military surplus pair of boots, then I don't think you'll be disappointed and I do think you'll get a very durable product, something that's designed to last and should you ever choose to wear them in those more treacherous conditions, then they'll see you through just fine. And that is everything on the Nike SFB Field 2 boot. Let me know what you think of them down there in the comments. Do you think this is overkill for most people? Should you just go for the cheaper option and get some military boots that maybe don't look quite as cool? Or is it worth splashing out, going the whole hog, making sure that you've got that futuristic aesthetic and something a little bit cooler than your average military stuff going down the whole outfit? Maybe it depends a little bit on exactly what you plan on wearing these things with. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. I'm be checking through them and as always thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and we will see you next week in the next video shout out to mr savage definitely a good choice buying a lot of shirts from uniqlo i think i've got more from there than pretty much anywhere else and they've all been pretty good and shout out to Alex for giving some more info on the precise construction of the merino on the Arcteryx t-shirt. With anything like that, there's always like an umbrella term and then lots of other different specific materials that come under that. So it's always a good idea to make sure you know exactly what you're buying before you go ahead and pick that up. But anyway, I am really glad that you guys enjoyed that Arcteryx Valence t-shirt video. It looks like it's um, got some good responses so far. I'm definitely up for doing more comparative content like that in future, so keep an eye out. Thanks for making it all the way to 
the end of the video. If you want to catch some more stuff, there's going to be links going up at the top there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then you should definitely consider doing so because there's going to be more videos like this going up every week. We got pants, we got jackets, we got sneakers, we got cool comparative stuff and pretty much everything in between.